Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Bud Mingledoff. Bill asked me to uh, introduce myself. I'm Bud Mingledoff. I'm the chairman of the board of Mingledoff's Incorporated, and I wrote a little blurb for, for Bill in, in the back of, uh, of his book. And Bill, had, Bill and I started working together, oh, back in um, it was 1995 or so, so it's been a, been a good while. And Bill asked me to tell you a little bit about Mingled Offs Incorporated and, you know, where we came from. And so I'll just, uh, I'm going to talk like I'm talking to Bill, even though Bill has, has lived this story with me. He had said, when you look at a company like ours, we were doing things that, that created growth, but that same effort to create growth created problems over on the other side of the business. So we had the sales side that was trying to drive up sales by adding more salesmen. We had chief financial officer running the operations side that's trying to run the operations on a shoestring. So literally the operations side of the company is putting the brakes on the uh, uh, sales side of the company. And so we literally had, it was like a, if you had a race car and um, one person has got the, uh, the, the gas slammed to the floor and the other person sitting next to you has got the brakes mashed to the floor. So it was no wonder that we had all that stress and crack and everything going on within the company. So uh, Bill came in and started working with us and um, began, of course, communicating with me about what he was finding. And, and uh, then we set out to start fixing all of that stuff. And uh, uh, today, we, we are still using, I would say, probably 90%. We use different terminology for things. But we're still using, I would say, 90% of what we put in <coughs> in 1995. So uh, uh, Bill asked me to kind of shoot a video and, 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 and tell everybody about that. But literally, when Bill started working with us, I'll show you how much complexity has been added. The company was doing uh, right at 100 million in sales. And we closed out this year at 440 million. We had um, three remote distribution centers. Now we have 37. And we took, for example, um, one of the things we did, we took, for example, our worst performing distribution center uh, in our most competitive market. It was in South Atlanta, which is a commodity uh, market. Uh, the demographics are significantly different between North Atlanta and South Atlanta. And um, we were struggling with that store. We had a store that was successful in Marietta. So we decided we would literally take the, the store in Forest Park and turned it into the best store we had. So we, uh, we went to work on that store and the idea was to create the model store that we would then take to every place, every place we went. And if you look at a company, the company really is just a series of processes. And if you can replicate, if you think about McDonald's, McDonald's is, you think of it as a restaurant, but it's actually a process that, that Ray Kroc developed um, and it's repetitive. You can, you can just repeat it. And he was, uh, uh, he was selling automatic milkshake mixing machines and, and he understood that the beauty of an automatic milkshake mixing machine was that it was consistent you ended up making a milkshake that was always the same. And so if you develop the perfect formula for it, then all you had to do was replicate it time and time again. And so we, we developed, um, just like Rich Carlton would develop the perfect hotel room, and then take the staff in and show them what the, the maids and everything, this is what the room should look like when you leave. Well, we had the same thing with the store. This is what the store should look like. This is a, um, a, the, the team atmosphere that you should have in the store. So we, we began to shape the culture of the company um, in, in sections, and then you put it all together. But we, we, uh, uh, we, we, were, we were intervening in the operation of that store, for example, uh, to figure out the systems that were creating the back orders and the systems that were bogging down the warranty flow and the systems that 
resulted in um, the, too many mangled oils, please hold on the phone. And so, in so doing, not only did we take the stress out of the company, <coughs> it became a motivator for the company. That changed the morale in the company. The morale gets knocked in the teeth when you got, because when all they're doing, when all your people are doing is fighting fires. Um, and we were, we were a fire brigade. We were reacting to everything that came along. Um, and we were put out of fire here, and then another one come out here. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen that whack-a-mole game where the, <laughs> the mole pops up and you hit it, and then another one pops up and it starts out real slow. Well, I tell you what, with 37 stores that we were still playing the whack-a-mole game today that we were playing when we had, you know, two or three stores. Um, it would be insane. And of course, the whack-a-mole game, as it speeds up, you end up, you're just slamming around trying to, uh, to hit all of the moles popping up out of the holes. And that's what, literally what we were doing. So here we are today, we have, uh, I would say, we have 515 people. Uh, just finished a board meeting where we're talking about 2018, and that 515 is going to 550. Um, and uh, um, the sales you know, just keep compounding. Um, so, you know, today as I sit here, the average competitor that I compete with is 44 competitors, distributors that do what we do, and their average annual sales at 12, right at 12 million. At 440 million, we're roughly 40 times the size of our average competitor and um, with the, the things that Bill taught us, we went on to, uh, um, to buy four other companies and we started five. And some of them uh, are literally, the, the size of the company doesn't really give us any like pricing advantage because every, we have buying groups that everybody's a member of and we're a member of a buying group. Uh, in order to buy, buy correctly, but uh, the real advantage that Mingle Laws has is that we can offer services to help our customers grow their businesses that a smaller company may not be able to do. For example, when Bill was working with us, we took a, uh, a man we had on board, he was actually in field sales, and we turned him into a loaned chief financial officer to help our customers um, do a better job of managing their company's accounting system wide. And when we would bill it, I would look at the thing, you know, one of the things you, you need to do to improve your own company is to improve the performance of your own customers because the way they act impacts the way we then react to it.